Hello, and welcome to episode 11 of the Carla Knits podcast. My name is Carla, and I am a knitter and crocheter and a lover of all things yarn. Uh, I live in Nebraska with my husband, Jeff, my daughter, our daughter, Jenna, and our cat, Reese's. Uh, today is Friday, April 30th, and it is April 30th. I can hardly believe where the month of April <laughs> has gone. I don't know if any of you feel like that, but... For me, it feels like April has just whizzed on by. <laughs> so welcome to any returning viewers and any new viewers. Thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, you can find me on social media. I am CB Crafty Girl on Instagram and on Ravelry. And I did uh, announce last week that I have started a group on Ravelry for this podcast. So if you search for Carla Knits uh, on Ravelry, you should be able to find our group. And if I'm really good in my show notes, I will link it down below. Um, I still am really trying to get through the whole technology thing here. So adding links uh, is kind of a big, big thing right now. So I, I really do my best with those show notes. So I'm sure as the podcast keeps going on, I'll get better and better about doing doing those things. But Carla Knits podcast group, a lot of you have already joined and that is wonderful. So really happy to have you there. Happy to have you here today uh, joining me for some uh, crafty chat. Uh, I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel. Uh, I have appreciated all of you who have subscribed, who have given me a thumbs up, who have commented down below. That has mean, meant the world to me. So we are at 330-ish subscribers, which is wonderful. It is it is so fun, and I love to see how we are growing this little Carla Knits community, um, and I'm enjoying getting to hear from some of you, your fiber stories, uh, sharing things about yourselves, sharing patterns, sharing stories, knitting stories, hidden histories, crochet things, anything. I love it. So, uh, if you'd like to leave comments below, that would be wonderful. You can always reach out uh, through message on Ravelry or on Instagram if you'd like to get in touch with me. All right, so I, oops, excuse me. Sorry, my iPad went on the floor. Uh, so I am not wearing any knitwear today. Uh, it is getting warmer here in Nebraska. It is in the high 70s or close to the 80s and in the summer you will not find me in much knitwear occasionally occasionally as i'm in the basement and we have the air conditioning on i may put on some knit socks if my feet get chilly but in general probably no knitwear for the summer so i may occasionally put some on uh, but it was just feeling a little too warm today. So I have no knitwear that I'm wearing today. So we will get right in to finished objects. So I have this pair of socks as my finished object for today. Uh, these are a gift that I knit for someone. Uh, this is the Wish You Were Here socks pattern by the Kitchen Sink Shop. And I made another pair earlier, last month, a little while ago. Uh, they were a rainbow pair. And I am happy to say that I packaged those, those shorties up and brought them to the post office today. And they are being mailed out to my sister who lives in Michigan. It is Laura's birthday on Tuesday, so I don't think she watches this podcast. But happy birthday to Laura. Uh, so I enjoyed that pattern so much that I decided I wanted to do it again. So the yarn that I used for this pair, uh, the main color is by the Lemonade Shop in the sugar-coated colorway. And the contrasting heel, toes, and cuffs are Camelot Dye Works in the Siren colorway. So I think these turned out so bright and cheerful. These were really fun. Uh, this pattern... It will not be my last. I have really enjoyed working this pattern. So uh, I will be sending these off in a few weeks probably uh, for a gift. So that is my finished object for today. 
my works in progress. Uh, I showed this last week for the first time and I have made some really good progress on this. This is the wild flower tunic. So this is a baby tunic or dress. Uh, so wildflower tunic by Jessica McDonald. This is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Uh, you can see where I was last week by the stitch marker. So I have made several more inches. Uh, I am knitting the skirt portion a little longer than specified in the pattern. Um, I, I'm pretty close to being where I want with the skirt. Uh, maybe a few more rows or a few more rounds of the pattern and then it will be completed with um, this garter ridge border along the bottom, the bottom hem of the, the little dress. So the yarn that I am using, see that skein is getting down there. The yarn that I am using, let me double check, is, and I think I forgot to say this last week and I apologize. This is Big Pine Yarn Company and it's a sport weight yarn. It has been very nice to work with. The color is Regal, R-H-A-E-J, yeah, excuse me, R-H-A-E-G-A-L. And I'm not sure exactly what that is, but it is a lovely shade of green. And hopefully you can see the pretty texture. Maybe I'll show this side. The pretty texture in the skirt resembling wildflowers. So that has been really fun, fun to work. Uh, it has gone by fairly quickly. Um, and I, I look forward to getting it done. Uh, the top portion, right, is not a, a full neckline. It is a split on the side there. So after I complete the hem, I will pick up some stitches to do a, a little edging along those two, two flaps, two sides. And then I will create a buttonhole and put some buttons on. And I did order some buttons. And I think these will be so cute. I don't know how well <laughs> my fingers can hold these or if you'll be able to see. Yeah, I'll just show the buttons. <laughs> <laughs> but they're sweet little wooden wooden flower buttons and I'll just hold it against the green. I just think that is so pretty against the green and will be so cute. So I intend to put two buttons right there and I think yeah, I think that is going to be be very very sweet. So these wooden buttons, they came so fast. I ordered them from a maker who's on Etsy and eBay. And it's called uh, Country Girl Buttons. Um, so again, little wooden buttons, they are so sweet and I think they will be perfect, perfect on this sweet little green, green dress. So that I have worked on this week. The only other work in progress that I have to share with you this week is my pink shawl. And I have made some very good progress on that. So this, I am calling my pink shawl. Let's see. So this is, this is right side up. It's getting big. <laughs> right side up. Gosh, I never know how to show this. I don't know how, how people show their shawls so well. Anyways, I'll hold it upside down. So from the marker, this is how much progress I have made on it this week. Um, and remember the rows are getting longer. So now I am over 300 stitches. So I'm happy to report that I have one more row to go in this section. And then I will be done with this stockinette portion uh, with the mohair. But isn't that mohair just so pretty? So the pattern is called Grapefruit by Gabrielle Imbalt. It's on Ravelry. And the yarn is, this pretty mohair is pineapple yarn, her mohair silk in the fortunately pink colorway. And that is just lovely. And then the bright, bright fun pink down there is by Fiber Me This in the Zsa, Zsa colorway. So you, you have a lace section, 
garter ridge section, stockinette, and then that repeats. And now I have almost completed this stockinette section in the mohair. Uh, and it will be ready to go into a garter stitch section, alternating between the mohair and the pink. And then I believe it finishes out with the pink in a lace section and garter in just this. So I have three sections left of the shawl to complete. Um, I'm really happy to be through the mohair, almost through that mohair section. Um, I think I enjoy working with the fingering weight rather than that lace, that very fine lace weight. Although the fabric it creates is, is just beautiful. Someone said it kind of looks like cotton candy. It really does, but it is, it is quite lovely. But I think I enjoy working with this, knitting with this. So I'm anxious to get back into this. My goal is to have it finished by the end of May, which I think is very realistic. And of course I would like to have it finished much sooner, but I said, yep, yeah, no, well, that's okay. We're just going to give you till the end of May to do that. So uh, continuing to work through this and hopefully each week you see the, the progress that I have made on it. Really happy with that. So that is my only other work in progress for this week. Um, I have no socks on the needles right now. After I finished this, I don't know what day it was, Monday Tuesday I'm not sure and it's only Friday but for like three days I haven't had a sock to knit on and that has felt really weird <laughs> because I feel like I always have a sock on the go just to pick up and knit a few rounds here and there so if I've had short spurts of time I have picked up the little dress uh, you know to put some stitches on maybe do a round on uh, but it has felt odd not to have socks but I have resisted casting on socks because I am looking forward to uh, doing some striped socks for the first knit, first make along that uh, I am hosting. So if you join our Ravelry group, uh, we have our first make along, which is called the Spring Stripes Make Along. And I shared a little bit about this last week, and you can find some details on Ravelry. But you can knit, crochet, weave, make anything with stripes. And it's spring. I put spring stripes because we're in the season of spring. It runs from May 1st. So tomorrow I get to cast on tomorrow. Uh, May 1st through June 20th, the last day of spring. Uh, and you can make anything with stripes. If you go into the group there are um, people chatting and sharing what patterns that they are thinking about making so it's really fun uh, I just wanted to share I'll share a couple things but this this lovely cowl that I was wearing last week uh, I shared this last week this is the on point cowl by Ashley Coons this would be a perfect item to make for the spring stripes make along they are very clearly stripes and this was so much fun made with five mini skeins it could be made with leftovers in your stash uh, a very fun fun project so I couldn't recommend this more so if you aren't decided about what you want to make or haven't thought about it yet or just needed an idea I thought I would share that because I think that would be a lovely thing and really fun fun to uh, knit on for the for the make along. So for the make along, I will be drawing prizes uh, following that June 20th uh, end date. And someone on Ravelry, uh, Lumberjack Yarns, so graciously reached out to me and offered up um, to die a skein of yarn uh, as a prize. So I am so grateful for that. That is so kind. Uh, and so I will just I will just say here if you are a maker of any kind if you uh, dye yarn if you make bags if you make little stitch markers or progress keepers and would like to donate to the podcast for for this make along for future make alongs for giveaways please I would love that I would love to feature your product and I would love to offer that uh, to subscribers 
people who are participating in make alongs. So uh, you could reach out to me on Instagram through direct message, or you can reach out to me on Ravelry uh, and message me on there. So again, thank you so much to Lumberjack Yarns for that. And when that comes, I will be showing showing that off here on the podcast. All right, so thinking stripes. So I'm, I'm definitely going to cast on some socks and I'll get to that in a minute, some socks. But I wanted to share that I am going to be crocheting something for this also. So crocheting something for our make along. And I shared last week that I wanted to make this sweet blossom blanket in different stripes of crocheted color textures, uh, different stitches. This just looks so fun. And I had talked about how I had trouble ordering the yarn and it hadn't come. <laughs> and the, the missing yarn still has not come, which is totally fine. But I did get, in this basket here, I did get my yarn from um, Jimmy Bean's Wool. So I have the yarn to, to start this project. And it has taken all of me not to, not to uh, start chaining <laughs> before Saturday because even though I won't count myself in my make along for prizes and everything I wanted I wanted to be true to it and start on the same day as you all will be starting so I will I will be chaining tomorrow um so the yarn did come and I am so grateful for that I have clue one or week one this this crochet along so this is a crochet along that's going along on uh, Sirdar, it's a yarn company, uh, is divided into five different weeks. So they're releasing different parts of the pattern over the course of five weeks. So last week, the first, the first clue or the first section was released. Well, this week, section two was released and I have been unable to download that part. I have tried the last two days. So somehow I just really feel like this project, maybe I am not supposed to make this project. I don't know. I am feeling a little discouraged about that. So, you know, I am going to get started with section one and I am going to hope and pray that I will be able to download the next week's clue or maybe, maybe this is just, you know, I have to get through portion one, relax, do that. And then maybe section two, then I'll be able to download it. And that's okay too. <laughs> so uh, I do really look forward to uh, to using or to crocheting this. I am not using the exact yarn as specified in the pattern. I tried to do some color matching. My colors are not exact, uh, and I'm substituting a couple colors in here. But I I really look forward to crocheting this. I haven't had a large crochet project to work on in a while outside of my scrappy crochet afghan. So. Uh, this with the different sections of different crochet stitches and textures, I think, I think will be a lot of fun. So I'll be anxious to report back on how it's going next week. So my first thing I'll be working on for the stripes make along will be that sweet blossom blanket. So the next thing I'm going to work on is a pair of striped socks. And I have, I have four self striping yarns that I have picked from my stash that I am considering and I may cast on more than one. <laughs> we will see. Uh, I've shared a couple of them before but I'll just go through these really quickly. This is a Knitterly Things uh, self-striping yarn in the Bubble Topia colorway. This is Die For You and this is Cozy Up With Jojo. So uh, some of you may know the Cozy Up with uh, Cozy Up Knits, Cozy Up Knits with the Four Sisters in Canada. So this is their mom, Jojo. So they, this yarn dyer made a color colorway for for their mom, which is really fun. That and I shared this wonderful skein last week by Night Owl Fibers, and this is the Chicka Chicka Boom Boom in reference to that delightful kids book and then this is a desert vista dye work self-striping yarn and the colorway is 
no soggy bottoms, which I don't really know what that is referring to. The colors just kind of spoke to, spoke to me when I purchased it. Uh, last year at some point she did um, a free shipping. So I, I picked up several skeins of her, her yarn during, during that time. So these, these are all contenders right now for making a pair of self-striping socks or two as part of this make along. Uh, on her, in, in the Ravelry group, um, a couple people were talking about the pattern. It's a sock pattern by the Crazy Sock Lady. I'm going to pull it up on my iPad, called the Heel Toe Dosi Do Pattern, which many of you may be familiar with. Here is a picture of it on Ravelry. Let's see. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Uh, and somebody, somebody in the Ravelry group uh, wondered if this was the pattern that I had talked about I'll just share this little story, if you want the full story, episode four. <laughs> uh, this pair of socks, uh, originally I cast on last, last summer, early last fall. This is another Desert Vista Dye Works uh, colorway in the um, Little Shop of Zombodies. And I had said that I had tried a pattern and I had knit a full sock and I had knit the other sock, I think it was almost to the heel before, and I was getting an inkling that it was going, it was too tight. The patterning, it, the patterning was just pulling the sock in too much. So I had knit the full sock, had knit a good portion of that second sock, and at that point decided to try it on. Well, I could not get that first completed sock on over my heel. Uh, and I didn't say what the pattern was, but <laughs> one of you kind of uh, figured out that this was the pattern I was talking about. So it's the heel toe do -si do pattern by K of the Crazy Sock Ladies. And I have knit several, several of her sock patterns and been successful. Uh, I am a very tight knitter and I truly should have tried that sock on at the point of the heel on the first one. I just should have, and I should do that on all socks that I knit, <laughs> but I didn't. Um, and so that pattern just had pulled, pulled that fabric in so tight that it did not work. I knit my socks uh, typically on a US one, a 64 count, which I did for this pair of socks. But, all sock yarns are not created equal, and I do feel like this is a little bit thinner. So this is also Desert Vista Dye Works. I do feel like this is a little bit thinner of a sock yarn. So that combined with the fact that the fabric was pulling in, um, maybe should have signaled something in my brain a little sooner. So a couple of you were talking about that in our Ravelry group that you'd like that one of you wanted to try the heel toe do -si do pattern and someone else said, oh, I made it. It was great. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I was like, I don't want that pattern to beat me. I really like that sock pattern. So maybe enough time has gone by since last year. And I'm saying it, it has been enough time. So I am telling you here that I am going to attempt to do that sock pattern again. So this time, and I don't know which skein of yarn I am going to do, but I am going to do one of two things. Depending on if I choose a thinner fingering weight yarn or these two are a little bit thicker, plumper uh, yarns. So depending on which yarn I choose to do that pattern with, I will do one of two things. I will either- so Sorry about that weird transition. Um, I realized when I finished recording the video and I went to look at it that it had stopped recording. Luckily it had, it had recorded most of it, but I have tried to do this again a couple times. So I think this is my third time that I'm going to do this ending again. <laughs> so we will see. So I, I was talking about how I will do one of two things when trying to knit the heel toe do, -si -do sock pattern this time. 
So if I stick with a US size one, I will uh, increase to 72 stitches. So US one, I will do 72 stitches, but for my size 10 feet, you know, it takes a long time to knit a pair of socks. So when you talk about go from going 64 to 72, that's a lot more stitches overall, but that's okay. So I will either do that or I will um, keep at the 64 stitch count and go up a needle size to a US 1.5. So it depends again on which sock yarn I choose which which way I'm gonna go um, and I, I'm not really sure yet so <laughs> wish me luck on this on this uh, knitting sock pattern on this on this sock knitting uh, and join me next time to see which what I'm doing and if it is going well <laughs> with this so it'll go well right <laughs> with that I just have a little bit of chatter about this week uh, I had mentioned on the last podcast that I was going to be uh, accompanying my husband's choir for a concert. That concert was this past Sunday, and it, it went very well. Uh, the the uh, choir members were masked, and the people who came were masked, and it was, it was very, it, it went very well. Um, the, the students loved being able to perform, and the people loved loved having a concert and being able to go to an in-person live concert so it was it was really special and uh yeah it just it went very well so thank you for all of you who wished wished me luck last week for that concert um uh other things this week uh this wednesday was my final day of teaching for this semester. So uh, I teach at our local college. I teach uh, private piano and I teach beginning class piano. So both of those ended on Wednesday. Uh, I have one more day next week where I will go for a keyboard exam and then I will be officially on summer vacation, which seems very early. Uh, it'll be the first part of May and I'm on I'm on summer break, so, uh, but it means a whole, whole summer, you know, several months of lovely knitting and crocheting time, so I am absolutely, absolutely looking forward to that. Uh, let's see, oh, we had some company come in town. My father-in-law and his wife are traveling from Air their home in Arizona to their home in Ohio, and we're able to stop by, and my kids... Uh, all came home and so grandpa was able to visit with his Nebraska grandchildren. We were able to all go out uh, to a restaurant to eat together and that was a first for us. Uh, so that was that was very special. Um, yeah, so those are some of the highlights from our week. With that, I guess I will stop for now. Uh, just a reminder, if you'd like to join the Ravelry group or join us for the Spring Stripes Make Along, please do so. I'd love to have you join us. Uh, hope you all have had a good week and I wish you a happy week ahead of, of crafting uh, any creative things that you enjoy doing. So with that, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.